Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to get a quick start with your Molinito. Um, basically how to dial in a brand new Molinito and get the perfect grind that you're looking for, whether it's going to be very coarse masa or in incredibly fine. You can do it all with the Molinito. Um, so right here, this is this going to be a brand new Molinito. We have it loaded up with the stones and we have here the stone clutch lever and the tightening knob in the back. Um, now what we're going to want to do whenever we get, uh, we're starting for the first time, especially with brand new stones, um, is set everything to default. Uh, that's essentially to say to, re to ensure that the stone clutch lever is disengaged, that's turned all the way to the back, and the tiny knob in the back is fully loosened. Um, now with both of those checked for and made sure that they're set to default, now what we're going to do is account for the thickness of the stones in your machine. Um, so the Molinito can take a varying types of thickness of stones, um, especially since the stones that are sent are all handmade, so they're not going to be precise. Um, and what we're going to do now is account for that in the grind and ensure we're starting off on the right foot before we begin to dial in. So with the stones loaded, everything set to default, the first thing you're going to want to do is engage the lever. Uh, you can see what I tend to do, especially on new machines, um, is to give myself sort of some support because it can be stubborn. Essentially, the lever can require a bit of force to, uh, to engage. That's totally normal. It does get easier over time as the spring begins to loosen. So what you see I like to do here is uh, brace the front of the machine to give myself better leverage and then engage the lever here on the side. And now what that's doing is it's moving the plate here in the, in the uh, dispenser forward. It essentially moves the stones closest the fastest, right? The turning, the tiny knob in the back is incrementally, will incrementally bring the stones in together. We're not touching with that right now. That's been set to default. It's fully loose. All we're doing is engaging the stone clutch. Now with the stone clutch lever engaged, go ahead and put your hand inside the basin. Put both hands on the stones and see if they wiggle. You can hear right now there's space between them. I'm not trying to force it or kind of, you know, force that space, but if I put my hand in there, you can hear it. What we're wanting to do is get to the point just when they touch, right? Uh, so we'll go step by step on how they get there. First, always disengage the lever when you're going to make any tweaks or to the settings. I'm going to pop the lever back, disengage it. Now I'm going to turn the tightening knob, maybe a half rotation to see how that affects the spacing. Remember the tiny knob is incremental, the stone clutch lever, lever is one big throw. So I'm gonna do one half rotation. All right, now let's see how that adjusted the stones. I'm gonna engage the lever. Tighter, but I can still, I can still hear the wobble. So again, disengage. We're gonna head to the back and tighten it once more. We're gonna just do a half a rotation again. Test it out. Now I'm going to engage. I can say right now when I'm putting my hands on the stones, they're touching. There's no wiggle room between them. Um, they're set. Now we're ready to start dialing in. Essentially what we've done is we've, we've allowed the stones to touch, but even at this stage when we're going to feed, nix them all into the hopper and start grinding, you're probably still going to get coarse masa. Um, and the reason is that the, inside the stones, there's even more of a gap. There's that floral pattern um, that's going to create sort of that coarse grind. Um, so we can get even finer, but this is a good place to start and then where we can start kind of now manipulating the knob in the back to get us to the preference that we're looking for. So we'll load up the, some Nixtamol into the feeding tray. Now a key component in the first grind is allowing the stones to get coated with Nixtamol. Right now the stones are touching, they're, they're, they're right on each other with nothing in between. If we were to grind in this method, it would quickly wear down the stones, it would wear down the grooves and begin a crystallization process that kind of nullifies the porous natures of the basalt stones. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is before we start, now that we have this sort of setting here, we're going to disengage the lever and just feed next to all with the stones open. That's going to give a nice coat into the stones and, and allow something in between them before we start grinding them right away. So I'm going to put a little bit in there. When I turn on the machine, uh, you're going to notice that when it comes out, it, they're going to be quite large. They're going to be almost whole kernels. That's totally normal. Again, we're just coating the stones. Okay, we're going to turn on the machine with the stones fully disengaged.
Okay, we do this for about 10 seconds. Just again, just to coat the stones, you're gonna see whole kernels coming out here. We can go ahead and clear it from the basin. We'll recycle it back into the feeding tray so we can grind them further. All right, so now we're ready to start dialing in the machine. So we have the stones coated, um, and we've also kind of gotten to the point where engaging the lever now prevents the stones from moving. What we're gonna do is re-engage the stone clutch here on the side. And now we're gonna go over the feeding process on the Molinito. So I know for me, myself, my first instinct was to fill up the hopper um, to get as much corn in there and to get a smooth flowing process. Um, one thing to note is while the auger can pull in Nixtamal very efficiently, the stones have a different max rate at how they can grind, right? It's gonna be a little bit slower than how much the auger can pull. So essentially what that means, if, if you're overfeeding the hopper, what's happening is the hopper is pulling in Nixtamal and it's pushing out the corn between the stones rather than allowing the stones to grind them and to get to their full, um, sort of full preference of coarseness. Um, so if you were to, to tighten it all the way, no matter how tightened it, if you overfeed in it, it's still just pushing the kernels in. So the method that we found that works best with the Molinito is a, a combination of slowly but consistently feeding Nixtamol into the hopper. Um, you never want the hopper to be empty. We don't want the stones grinding amongst themselves, uh, but we also don't want to overfill it. So that sweet spot tends to be around seven to 10 kernels. You load up seven to 10 kernels, you wait for the auger to do its job and start pulling it in. And once you see the last bits of kernels in there, then you go ahead and add a, a few seven to 10 more. Um, doing this consistently is gonna get you to your grind much quicker. Uh, and you're gonna notice that you're not gonna need to tighten the stones as much. Now, another crucial component when uh, grinding with Nixtamal is the incorporation of water. So I have a little bit of water here that I'm gonna be pouring occasionally into the hopper. Um, the Molinito is a wet grinder, so you can absolutely add water into it. The amount of water is really gonna to be to the preference of the user. Um, you definitely do want to incorporate some water in the grind, because um, it, it does help provide that even finer grind, some magic between both the nixtamal and the heat and the basalt and the water really allows for the grind to come, to come home and get dialed in. Um, but if you uh, are noticing that your masa is a bit dry, you can also add water after the fact uh, to kind of incorporate it uh, to, before you start cooking tortillas or any other masa shape. Uh, but we recommend initially to add it on in the, in the beginning to get you to that grind sooner. Uh, okay, so we have the Molinito ready to get dialed in. We have them coated with Nixtamal. Uh, we're gonna now start to um, start the dialing in process essentially. We're gonna test to see if the base settings that we have are gonna provide us with the, the grind that we're looking for. And in this case, we're going for a very fine grind. Um, so we're gonna see what it's gonna look like. And, and when you're getting to the point of beginning to dial in, um, give the machine about 15 to 20 seconds of uh, feed. Um, it's not gonna be right away that you're gonna see the, the results. Um, you're gonna wanna do a couple feedings to see what that consistency is gonna truly be. Um, so I'm gonna turn on the machine, I'm gonna feed it for a few seconds, and then we'll take a look at what's coming out on the basin. Here we go. All right, we're getting some of the Masa coming through here. Let's go ahead and grab it. You're gonna to wanna to put it together. A couple things that I'm looking for here in terms of the preference that we're trying to go for, which is very fine masa, is can I feel anything between my fingers? I kind of have a little bit of coarseness here. Pretty moist. It's got a good form to it. Another thing that you're wanting to see with masa, especially with the basalt stones, is that it's warm to the touch. Um, that's when you know you're really starting to get dialed in. Um, right now these, this is about tepid and it's, I can still see some large kernels, but more importantly, it's more about the feel. Okay, so since this masa is a bit coarse, what we're gonna wanna do is tighten up the stones and bring them a little bit closer. Now, in order to do that, the first thing is to always disengage the lever here on the, on the side. You're never gonna wanna use the tightening knob with the lever engaged. Um, two main reasons, it's pretty difficult. Um, the stones are creating a lot of tension between them and it's gonna get harder and harder to turn. And, it shouldn't be that difficult to turn the knob. Uh, but another reason as well is you can get to a point where you over tighten the, the knob in the back and the relationship between the lever and the knob uh, can be such that you actually will lock in the lever 
and you'll find it very difficult to even disengage. And so you're kind of stuck with a fully engaged machine, unable to remove the hopper or the stones. Um, and so uh, best rule of thumb is to always disengage the stone clutch lever here on the side before turning. Um, but another thing to keep in mind is now that we're at the point where the stones are touching, we're not going to need to turn the tightening knob that much. It's, it's very incremental at this point. So from here on in, we're going to do about a quarter of a turn uh, to see how those results go. A little goes a long way once the stones are touching. Um, so let's give that a shot. I'm going to disengage. And I'm going to turn the tiny knob here in the back a quarter of a turn clockwise. We're going to continue doing the same thing slowly but consistently feeding Nixtamol into the hopper, incorporating some water, and seeing how the results come. Already it's feeling a little warmer. Key test here is I'm rubbing it between my fingers just to see if I can feel anything. And then we're dialed in. We're going to give one more quarter of a turn just to be sure. Um, and then we'll grind the rest. Again, the process for Adjusting it again is to always disengage the lever here on the side. I'm going to go to the back, turn it one quarter of a turn forward. That's clockwise. Now that I have sort of my setting that I know that I'm going to like, there's a securing nut here in the back that I can tighten and secure it against the wall. That's going to save my spot so that when I come back to the grind, we're not going to have to be doing this whole process again. It's really just loading up the stones, engaging the lever and going. But it's also going to keep and save my spot from the machine if it's shaking or moving it around. It's not going to loosen it up anymore. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and secure that nut right now so that we're, we're locked in. Okay, with everything secured, we're going to engage the lever. Keep in mind that it's going to get tighter and tighter each time you do it. It's totally normal. Again, I like to brace myself with the front of the Molinito and engage it here to get better leverage. It will get easier in time, but with this a brand new Molinito, keep in mind that it's going to take a little bit of force to get it locked in. Totally normal. Okay, so let's feed in a bit more Nixtamol into the hopper. Another trick uh, that you can use the water for is if you're noticing some of the Nixtamol getting stuck here along the edges, just due to the, the skins kind of sticking, when you feed the water into the sides, you can feed it here and it'll help feed the ones stuck down into the auger. You don't want to put your hands or any utensils really in there to, to, to damage anything. So um, water itself will help uh, remove the gumminess and, and feed it back into the hopper. All right, so let's grind the rest. All right, so once you're done, go ahead and bring the masa together. This one looks to be a little extra moist. What we can do is just grind a little bit more with less water to kind of even out the moisture level. All right. Grab the masa from the basin. So this texture is, it's nice and consistent. You can feel no grains in it. It's nice and moist to the touch, but not so much. You don't want the, you really don't want the masa to stick to your fingers. That's a, it's a good indicator that it's a bit too moist, but you do want it to be a little tacky to the touch. And it looks like it's what we got here. That's how you dial in the Molinito.